Hey boys, it's Harm None. Today I'm going to be going over my picks for the top 10 most underrated vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online. For a vehicle to get onto this list, it has to be a vehicle that I feel like is undersold by the community. People don't talk about them enough. A lot of people might have them, but some of them are just, you know, really good performance for the money, but nobody uses them, or have really cool customization for the money, but nobody uses them. Basically, cars that are very good that don't get enough attention and love in GTA Online. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started with number 10. At number 10, we have the cheapest, if not the cheapest, Imani Tech vehicle in the entire game, and this is of course the Bravado Greenwood. Coming in at $1,098,000 if you have the trade price unlocked, or up to $1,465,000 if you do not have the trade price unlocked. Like I said, this is an Imani Tech vehicle, it does have an armor upgrade as well as of course, Imani Tech, so you can put a missile lock on jammer on or the remote control device. And on top of this, it also has an oil slick proximity mine dropper. It is within the muscle car category and it is a four seater, which is another bonus. You can drive around with a few friends in this thing in relative safety. It can take four RPGs and 12 homing missiles, which is pretty good. It's got a nice amount of customization and being that it is one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest Imani Tech vehicles in the game, it is really, really good, but you never see anybody driving this thing. So if you're balling on a budget, this is a good one to pick up. It does have some pretty good handling. The acceleration is decent as well. Overall, it is a pretty good muscle car. Definitely one that you should look into. That's it for number 10. On to number nine. At number nine, we have the Meibatsu Penumbra FF for $1,380,000. I'm actually surprised this one is still in the game because I feel like it's kind of one that the community overlooks a lot of the time. It was added with the Los Santos Summer Special DLC in 2020, and it's got all wheel drive, which is very good for the launch, of course, and it's got some decent acceleration to complement it. Unfortunately, the top speed isn't very high, but the handling is quite good. And the reason that you buy this car is, of course, because of the customization. It is based off a Mitsubishi Eclipse, the same one that was in the original Fast and Furious, which is pretty cool. I feel like the Fast and Furious crowd definitely knows quite a bit about this car, but I feel like a lot of people also don't even know that this car exists in the first place. Overall, it is actually a very good car, and it is one that I would recommend picking up. It's a personal favorite of mine. Definitely look into this thing if you guys are looking for a nice tuner car to pick up. At number eight, we have the Enus Jubilee coming in at $1,237,500 if you do have the trade price, up to $1,650,000. The Jubilee is an Imani Tech vehicle and also on top of that, it's a very underrated SUV. It's actually one of the fastest SUVs in the entire game around a circuit, which is pretty awesome. It's got some great handling for it being as big and tall as it is, and the customization options aren't too bad, but really you're buying this thing for the overall look of it to begin with, as well as the performance. It's got a lot of speed, the acceleration's phenomenal. It is, of course, all-wheel drive, so you get a great launch with it as well, and the Imani Tech is just an added bonus. However, this is a first-generation Imani Tech car, so of course it does have bullet-resistant windows, and it also has an optional front-mounted machine gun that you can add onto it that does do a pretty decent amount of damage. And being that this thing is raised up quite high, the machine guns are perfectly at head level in most vehicles that you will be targeting, like civilian cars or cars that players are going to be driving. It can also take four RPGs or 12 homing missiles, and of course it does have an oil slick proximity mine dropper. So overall, the Jubilee is pretty phenomenal, definitely a good car for the price. Not that much more expensive than the Greenwood in all honesty, and it is quite a lot better than the Greenwood, but I feel like both are very underrated. That's it for the Jubilee, on to number seven. At number seven, we have the Ubermacht Cypher. Now, I've talked about the Ubermacht Cypher at length, uh, especially recently. I feel like this car is so underappreciated by the community outside of like the BMW fans. It goes for $1,162,000 if you have the trade price, but if you don't have the trade price, it's gonna run you $1,550,000. It was released with the Tuners DLC, so you already know that that means it has a lot of customization, and it's definitely one of the most realistic looking cars in the entire game. It's based on the BMW M2, and honestly it looks so similar to it that it's like you'd almost think that they'd get sued for copyright infringement off of this one it's got so much customization and it also is able to be raced in not only sports class races but also it doubles as a tuner vehicle so it can be used in the tuners class races and it's actually got some pretty good performance. I've won a lot of races with the Ubermach Cypher in the tuners category. Its handling is really good despite it being rear wheel drive only. And the acceleration and even the launch is really, really good despite 
the rear wheel drive that it has. Overall, it is a great vehicle, definitely one to look into, definitely one to pick up. I 100% recommend this thing. Let's go ahead and move on to number six. At number six, we have the Lampadati Tropos Rally coming in at $816,000. This is one of, if not the absolute best rally car in Grand Theft Auto Online, but it was added into the game a very long time ago, so most players aren't going to know just how good the Tropos Rally actually is. It's got really good handling, and it has some of the fattest rear tires I've seen on any vehicle in GTA. It might even have the biggest rear tires out of any car in the entire game, which of course means that it has a lot of traction. And being that it's rear-wheel drive only, you would think this thing is all-wheel drive the way it handles on-road and off-road. The acceleration is also very good because those back tires are so wide that they just hook up right away. It accelerates really well. It's got a little bit of customization, not the most ever, that's for sure, and the customization options aren't that extravagant. It's got like two livery options, as well as a few other things that you can do to the car, but overall it is such a good looking vehicle and it is such a good performing vehicle for the money as well. Definitely one that I would recommend picking up 100%. That's it for the Tropos Rally at number six, on to number five. At number five, we have a vehicle that a lot of people just completely overlook because you buy it off of Warstock. This is the Ocelot Ardent, and it goes for $1,150,000. It is weaponized, fast, has great handling, and has some nice customization options as well. The machine guns do a decent amount of damage, albeit not the most ever, but this thing is also great performance-wise. It's not just about the machine guns. The performance of this car is insane. The handling of the Ardent is like, it's honestly one of the best cars I've ever driven in GTA as far as the handling goes. The handling is absolutely phenomenal on this vehicle. And it's so underrated because it's on Warstock. Nobody even thinks to look at this car. It's also in the Sports Classic category. And in the Sports Classic category, it is actually one of the fastest vehicles to use for racing. It's crazy. Now, I have heard that on some races, you can't actually use the Ardent because it is weaponized, but on some, you can. It's kind of strange. It's one of those, you know, Rockstar Logic moments. Very strange, but regardless, this car is insanely good, guys. I really recommend picking this thing up, taking a look at it. If it's ever in, you know, the test drive at the car meet, you should 100% test drive it, see for yourself, and then maybe purchase it if you want to. Phenomenal car. Definitely look into this one. At number four, we have the Ubermacht Sentinel Classic Widebody, which is going to run you 630 grand initially, and then another $700,000 for the Benny's conversion. It's got so many customizations before you even make it into the Benny's conversion, but once you do that, of course, Benny's, you guys know how Benny's works. There are tons of things that you can do with this car. It looks so much better. All the livery options are absolutely phenomenal. The performance of the vehicle, too, is another underrated feature of it. It's actually one of the better drift cars in GTA, in my opinion. You can slide this thing super, super easily. It's got good acceleration, looks phenomenal. The handling is pretty decent, albeit it is a little bit loose and rough around the edges, but for the most part, I think this vehicle is absolutely awesome. Definitely one that I would recommend looking into, and I feel like this one is just completely forgotten about by most of the community because it came out at just an odd time. It came out actually last summer with the release of the Criminal Enterprises DLC, but it was drip fed for a few months, and then finally, it came into the game, but by that time, a lot of people weren't even playing GTA. Honestly, though, such a good car. Definitely look into this one, guys. That's it for number four. On to number three. At number three, we have the Dubachi Wagner coming in at $1,535,000. This is one of, if not the best, performing budget supercar in all of Grand Theft Auto Online. And it's easily a top 10 fastest supercar for circuit racing, at least on last gen consoles and PC. But even now, on the new gen consoles, it is probably if not within the top 10, just outside of the top 10. It's an all-around great car. It has phenomenal handling, a ton of downforce, a pretty high top speed of 126 miles an hour, which complements the vehicle extremely well. And the acceleration is decent. Off the line, it's decent. It's got some nice customization. It is a pretty good looking and unique looking car. It's based heavily off of the Aston Martin Valkyrie in real life, which is a very neat car as well. But unfortunately, because this thing was released so long ago, it's unknown by most of the community, which obviously is very unfortunate. But now that you guys have seen it in this video, I hope Wagner sales go up because this thing is honestly phenomenal. Definitely look into this, guys. Great vehicle. At number two, we have the Gauntlet Classic for $615,000. 
The Gauntlet Classic itself has a ton of great customization, and you can actually upgrade it into the Gauntlet Classic Custom at Benny's for an additional $815,000, which gives it even further customization as well as the sort of overall look of a Charger Daytona, which is very, very cool. The performance of the vehicle, whether it's the Gauntlet Classic Custom or the regular Gauntlet Classic, is very good. And for a muscle car, it actually handles quite well, which is very refreshing. So that is just an added bonus to the vehicle. Overall, a Gauntlet Classic, definitely a vehicle that you should look into for sure. For some quick honorable mentions on this list, all of these vehicles were removed from the game, but if they ever come up for sale, you should pick them up. The first of which is the Ocelot Locust for $1.6 million. Phenomenal car, one of the best handling vehicles in all of Grand Theft Auto Online. Another honorable mention being the Ubermacht SC1, another $1.6 million car. Got some great customization, actually very good performance, sounds phenomenal. Overall, very decent car. And of course, the Lampadati Tagon for $2.3 million with tons of customization, a very unique looking vehicle. Definitely one to look out for if it ever comes back into the game through the LS car meet or through your auto shop or anything like that. But of course, and number one, the most underrated car in all of Grand Theft Auto Online, I think nowadays, is the Obey 10F Widebody. It's gonna cost you $1,675,000 plus an additional $575,000 for the wide body kit, which makes the car a lot better. It actually takes the Obey 10F from being a high top 10s fastest sports car in Grand Theft Auto Online to a low top 10s fastest sports car in Online because the 10F with the wide body turns the car from rear wheel drive into an all wheel drive vehicle, which is how it should have been from the start in my opinion. Obviously, it also makes the car wide body and makes it so it's customizable in pennies to make tons and tons of adjustments to the car. One of the coolest things you can do this thing, I think, is smoking the headlights, which is not a very common option that we get in GTA. The customization's great, the performance of the vehicle is phenomenal. Definitely look into getting a Obey 10F wide body in Grand Theft Auto Online, guys. You never see anybody driving these things, even though it was released not that long ago. So I'd like to see a few more people driving these on the street, that's for sure. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what some of your favorite underrated cars in GTA are, and maybe I'll make a part two to this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, dislike if you didn't, of course. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care. Peace.